This video is sponsored by Mr. Prep Prescribed Online and Delivered to Your Doorstep. You know, I think I'm finally starting to understand all that drag band stuff. It should be illegal for someone to look this good. <sighs> I agree. It's me, Bust Me Spears, and welcome back to Hot or Hot. Today we'll be reviewing episode 14 of RuPaul's Drag Race season 15, in which our final four queens were challenged to write verses for and to perform choreography to RuPaul's new music video, Blame It on the Edits. Which like, how ironically tragic is that considering we just lost Lucy LaDuca, who undoubtedly got one of the craziest edits of all time? But hey, don't blame it on the edit. She is the one that said it. Anyways, we'll also be taking a look at each queen's final runway where they showcased their finest drag excellence. And then at the end of today's video, we'll be asking the question, who should take home the crown of RuPaul's Drag Race season 15? But first I thought it would be interesting to take a look into what is allegedly a scrapped partnership between Kraft Mac and Cheese and several of the Drag Race franchise alumni. So this all popped up on my radar while I was writing for this video and I couldn't help but wonder all of the information around the leak of this partnership was very odd and interestingly timed with April Fool's Day. But stranger things have happened, I suppose. So here's the tweet that started it all. RuPaul Drag Race Queens fired from Kraft Macaroni and Cheese commercial banned by Kraft Heinz anti-LGBTQ stakeholders shout get loose quoting current hashtag RPDR Queen MTV's Lucy LaDuca who was in her quote mac and cheese era says Mistress Isabel Brooks hashtag drag race. <laughs> And by the way, no need to play that back or read the tweet any closer. It's quite nonsensical and almost sounds like it was written as a joke. The whole Twitter account is just them retweeting this video of the queens from the franchise playing with some mac and cheese on a table and loosely claiming it seems that the ad in collaboration was scrapped because of the drag band bills floating around the country. And this like 15 second ad video itself is pretty benign. It's Rose, Kimchi, Kimura Hall, Lady Camden, Naomi Smalls, and Jada in a campaign for Kraft's mac and cheese that was apparently called Queens of Comfort. And the strange thing about all this is that while the Twitter account seems to be a parody of sorts, it's also making a pretty serious claim and the ad itself doesn't seem to be like an April Fool's joke. So I looked into this a little bit deeper but couldn't find much. When you click on it, you run into a password protected page. And as of right now, there's no statements from Kraft or any of these queens about this collaboration. And it's hard to take anything this Twitter account is saying seriously. So I think there are a couple of possibilities that could be going on here. Like, yes, this could be an ad that was ultimately pulled because the company didn't want to get themselves into hot water with all the anti-drag stuff going around. But I think it's also possible to consider this could be a campaign that just hasn't aired yet. And maybe some person working at the company or at the design firm that worked on this is leaking the file, maybe with some kind of malintent towards either the queens or the company. Who knows, but y'all know I love a good conspiracy. And now on to our final four, where we will ends with the final three. Or will we? We won't. But it was a good episode. First up, Anitra. Miss Anitra, our soft-spoken little wild card who lets her talent do all the talking. She enters this final four episode with three wins. Her first from the premiere of The Talent Show, and her second and third from the Wig Loose Rusical and Teacher Makeover episodes, which just happened the prior two episodes. She's coming in and technically at the start of this episode, tied for quote unquote first place. On the runway tonight, she is wearing what she describes as grand high empress Anitra drag and says this is one of her favorite things that she has made. And that quote about her making it, I'm highlighting because this outfit is so impressive. This is on the level of Gagatrandra that her design challenge was that shook the nation. You remember with like the vertebrae things and on the back and like the crazy gown, it, it was gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous gown. And Anitra can make gowns like this and girl I can barely make mac and cheese. <laughs> the callback! And throughout the season, Anitra has had good runways, but I truly think she saved the best in her closet for last. Which I think, strategically speaking, is really smart because it plays into that whole quiet, you don't know what to expect quality that she has that I think makes her so special. And topping off this gorgeous, gorgeous gown with a phenomenal hair unit like that with the waves and the crystals and the futuristic space future drama stuff going on makes it even better. This felt like a true finale look from her and it felt like something we've been working towards the whole season. She gave us a storyline and I love that for her. This look is hot. 
that. And in the challenge, she wrote lyrics that were fun and referential, stomping on roaches and walking these ducks. But I think overall her delivery of the rap in the song was a little too shy for the punchiness that a RuPaul bitch track kind of demands. Plus after the first part of her verse, it felt a little less personal. Like I think anybody could have written, I twist, I whip, I dip, hair flip, smash that eye, gloss that lip, a total 10, your girl's a hit. And that's true. I need her as a hit. A total 10 of a hit. And I do want to be clear here though, I think she and all the girls tonight did a great job and I'm not trying to knock that. But I think she maybe is still trying to figure out how to translate some of that freestyle energy she brings to her voguing and let's say lip syncs into choreographed rehearsed performances like this. And we did indeed see her struggle a little bit in rehearsals in the choreo and in some of the group shots, but in the solo shots of the music video, she killed it. Her performance in Blame Me on the Edit was absolutely hot. And I don't think there's any anything more Anitra really could have asked for or for a run on Drag Race. She's branded as a performer, she's got a catchphrase, and has showed the world she has this apparently phenomenal skill in creating gorgeous, gorgeous gowns. So I say props to you, mom. <gasps> Who's there? Did you know that Mr. offers free online prep and STI testing? And here's how it works. Get started by clicking the link in the description of my video to visit heymister.com. There you'll complete your confidential and judgment-free health review in just minutes. Next, you'll receive an at-home testing kit. No needles and no doctor's visit required. Complete it and send it back. Then a licensed physician will take a look at everything and prescribe prep if it's right for you. And if prescribed, Mr. actually works with your insurance company and or patient assistance programs to make sure that you can get prep completely free. No out-of-pocket costs. That's right, insurance or not, Mr.'s got you covered. No hassle and no paperwork. You'll get prep completely free and it'll be delivered to your doorstep in discreet packaging and your prescription will refill automatically every single month free of charge. So what are you waiting for? Prep yourself this spring. Just click the link in the description of my video to get your prep completely free. It's prep, it's prep, it's prep. Thanks, Mr. for sponsoring today's video. And next up, the young ingenue. Bucks Noir London, who enters this Final Four episode with two challenge wins. One from her House of Michelle Visage fashion look in episode five, and the other that she shared with Lucy LaDuca in the stand-up comedy episode. And her drag excellence runway tonight is a beautiful send-off to all the amazing looks that she has served on the runway. She's in a beautiful white silky satin wedding gown with gorgeous, gorgeous ruffles off the side of her waist, and my god, she looks gorgeous. Like, I hope if I ever get married, oh God forbid, that I look half as good as she does in this dress. And I just want to point out the judges talked a lot about Anitra's runway walk this season, which deserves to be talked about, but I don't think spent enough time talking about Lux Noir London's runway walk. Because she too, no matter the brief, absolutely commands the stage and demands your attention. And above all things, I think Lux has made it clear this season that she is somebody who has studied the RuPaul's Drag Race playbook and RuPaul herself. Like, let's not forget the Wee Wee Pole runway and then took all of her knowledge and served it to the camera in a beautiful, ready to snack on platter. I do think this look is hot. And I did peep the wedding gowns are the final look of an Oats Couture runway reference that she was doing there. And in the music video, she gave us a little taste of songstress Lux. And I won't even attempt actually singing this, but she sang, looking just like a dream, looking so fierce, I'd be causing a scene. When I step on the runway, you know all eyes on me. And she starts switching to a rap after the singing, which I thought was again very smart and clearly studied of Drag Race. She wanted to give the judges the best of both worlds and again demonstrate her versatility in all things drag, performance, and art, I guess? Like she can do it all. I think the only thing she was really missing in her verse was an acknowledgement to all of the eras stuff and maybe gate, 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 gates that she was involved in. Plus, I think it's worth noting she was probably the only one of this final four that picked up the choreo like they had been doing it since they popped out of the womb. Everyone else was struggling and she's just like, oh, okay, saw it once, got it. Nothing to blame on the edit here. This performance was hot. And next up, just give her the crown already. It's Sasha Colby. And she came into this final four episode with three challenge wins tied with Anitra. Her first was for the All Queens Go to Heaven skit in episode three, then the Crystal Ball, and then the 50-50 kind of parody interviews they did in episode 10. And on the runway, my God, teleport me to Mars or Hawaii. Sasha here is serving an homage to the beautiful orchid flower, literally with orchids all over her head in a beautiful headpiece. And also I think in the way the stems from that kind of come down around her arms and she's got these cool little futuristic elements around her wrists like these cuffs mixed in with what really is just a gorgeous pageant gown. It's crystalled, it's stoned, and she's giving us, I think,
think, a softer, more relaxed beauty than some of her previous runways from this season, which I think have really been focused on that body yaddy yaddy. And while I'll say I personally prefer the raw sex appeal from some of her more revealing looks, I do think it's great that she was able to, in this Drag Excellence runway, showcase the versatility that is demanded of a winner of RuPaul's Drag Race. She can truly do it all. And truthfully, like every single runway has been amazing with Sasha this season. She's either giving us fashion forward thinking and high concepts, like with that baseball gloves look, camp, like with that green leaf look from the ball, or drag excellence, like right here. This look is hot. But now let's take a look at the edit. So before we talk about the verse, I have to talk about the two outfits that she served in this music video. Like she gave us not one, but two high concept, amazing looks. First, the Barbarella fantasy that we saw the preview and the rehearsals of, and then the goop, the gag, the shock, the alien craziness with all the crystals and the contacts. And like that was phenomenal. Plus her verse, girl, she ate. Bad bitch body, I don't come to play. Best believe when I step on the scene, shady hoes just run away. Dream chaser, style maker, game changer, bank maker. Crack the code, now y'all know. Sasha Kobe run the show. Ah. And more than anything for Sasha in this music video was the way in which she delivered this rap with like that vocal fry and was giving these crazy alien looks. Like I just absolutely loved everything she did here. I bought the fantasy and I want the sequel. Plus the reference to the other Sasha cracking the code. Iconic. Sasha, this performance was hot. And finally, she's a panther on the runway tonight. Well, Cheetah, coming into this Final Four episode with one challenge win, but I think could have won so many more. It was shocking to me the number of times that they would announce someone else as the winner of a challenge and I was sitting there thinking, oh, Mistress has this in the bag for sure. But here we are. Her one challenge win was from the Daytona Wins reboot episode, episode seven. And again, the talent jumped out. The charisma, uniqueness, nerve, and talent jumped out. Just like it has for this entire top four, this, I think without a doubt, is one of the most versatile from each queen individually top four we've ever seen. I don't know. Like, it's really crazy how all of these queens can do everything. <laughs> Isn't that scary? Like my actual skin color versus the <laughs> yellow Simpson that I paint on. <laughs> I don't need to do any April Fool's shenanigans with y'all because I am the joke. Wow, remember my ASMR era? If y'all want me to bring that back, let me know. You wanna see my talent show? Girl, ASMR fantasy. Maybe more likely than you think. Let loose. Anyways, Mistress Tonight is in her Glamazon Cheetah Fantasy era. And she lets us know that this gown weighs 60 pounds. My God, I almost weigh that much. Skinny. And you know, that was apparent before she even said that. You can see from the intricate beating of this gown how heavy that thing is. Like when she moves, the entire thing is shaking and shimmering off of light and just looking untouchable on the runway. The other cool detail she highlights about this gown was the cheetah print itself was actually part of the beading and not the fabric under the beading. Girl, like, I don't know who made this, but props to them. This is so cool, so drag, so fun and just a great example of the drag excellence that I think Mistress Isabel Brooks is and showcases all the time. This look is hot. But I am gonna disagree, I think, with her performance in Blame It On The Edits, though I suppose we could just blame it on the edit. Her verse, delivery of that verse, and solo shots where she's performing the verse, I think, were some of the best in the music video. MIB, I'm the MVP. It makes sense why all these girls envy me, because I'm a clock the T and I don't give a tuck. And I'm certainly not doing her rap justice, but I just want to compliment her ability to rap her entire verse in like double time and sound great doing it. And a referential to both the season and herself, like when she talked about bum talk and her ability to gather the girls if they step out of line and her little acknowledgement of being the big girl of the cast. Everything she did here was characteristically and unapologetically Mistress Isabel Brooks. She has that confidence and ability to just kind of say what she's thinking. And that I think is really admirable, even if it does maybe sometimes get her into some hot water, like with Miss Lucy Laduca. The judges though end up putting her in the bottom this episode because I guess of the group choreo that uh, she struggled with in rehearsal. But I think them highlighting that was kind of weird for a couple of reasons, primarily because they asked the queens to learn that choreo 
the day of. That's a big ask to learn choreo and then immediately perform it. And that's something that we know Mistress throughout the season has struggled with here and there. Like in the Rusical, for example, she was having trouble getting some of the steps down. But then when she had time to go and rehearse overnight or whatever they gave them there, she came back and turned that performance out. So I don't think that was necessarily fair to evaluate the Queens on, but that is also something they did last season with the final five. And I also want to point out that Mistress wasn't the only one struggling with the choreo. In the group shots of Blame It on the Edit, there was almost always at least one queen out of time with like the backup dancers or the backup dancers were out of time with the queens. And overall, I just think it was kind of a disservice to the music video to even have those shots. Like why not just give the queens and everybody time to actually rehearse and then have a killer music video? Because you're gonna keep everyone anyways. The final three gag was fake and Mistress did great. This performance was hot. But concerning placements, bottom two, who won? I mean, I was so impressed with this episode. I think everyone did great, both on the runway and in the music video. And that's just a testament to how talented and versatile all four of these queens are. Sasha, though, did very obviously take home the win with everything she did in that music video. It's just next level. And we kind of get hints that this final three thing may not actually happen when we hear RuPaul talking to the other judges. And she says she promised herself that there would be an elimination every episode in this season, but also made it clear, her name is Roxy Andrews and she's here to make it clear, that that wasn't something she was totally sold on. And it was at that point I was like, okay, yeah, they're just gonna keep everybody. Why are we even like doing this lip sync thing? But they do it anyways. And we get Anitra and Mistress lip syncing. And I also wanna quickly remind you that I did react to this episode with my patrons over on patreon.com slash bussyqueen. And you can find the link to join my Patreon in the description of this video. Click it right now to help support me, my drag and my channel and get access to exclusive content like those reaction videos and early access to my YouTube videos. See you there. And I'll be honest, Anitra kinda ate her up. But Mistress was also in that 60 pound gown and was super limited in what she could do. And because this song wasn't a park and bark ballad, I mean, she was just at a disadvantage to begin with. And I will say, I think the elimination every episode thing that RuPaul promised herself was a great change for this season, considering what we came off the back of in season 14. It just kind of felt like at some point nothing was happening. Like, why are we doing this? It was nice, you know, to really feel like we were actively marching towards the end of this season and there was progression that we could see and measure through the absence of every queen every week. But it was also nice, I think, to not have an elimination in this episode when the top four are so clearly equal in their versatility and talents and ability to do drag. So here we are, everyone stays, nobody goes. And we've, again, got a final four. And I took a peek at the drag race social medias to see how the fans are receiving our final four and whose hashtag team they're on to hashtag win, hashtag RuPaul's Drag Race. On Instagram, as of filming this video, Sasha's Instagram, hashtag team Sasha Colby, has about 89,000 likes, Anitra's 82, Mistress 32, and Lux is 23. And personally, I'll say I'm team hashtag Sasha Colby. I think I've been a little maybe biased, fairly so, I'd say, towards her the whole season. I mean, look at the material and look at the performance, look at the track record. I think she'd be an excellent representative for the RuPaul's Drag Race franchise. And honestly, any of these queens would, and I would be happy to see any of them get the crown. Like, I think y'all know that. I'm so happy for all of them. But as far as what I think will happen in the finale, will Sasha actually get the crown? Maybe. Usually when a queen has the most wins and the most fan engagement on social media, yes, that queen gets the crown. But there are times in the past where we have seen really close levels of like fans wanting queens to win and very similar track records like Sasha's and Anitra's. So I would predict that it will be either Sasha or Anitra based on what I've seen happen in past seasons. Like almost never does the queen with the least social media engagement like Lux take the crown and almost never does somebody with only one or no challenge wins take the crown unless they've got overwhelming fan support like, you know, Willow Pill last season. But that's just a theory. A hot or rock theory. But I'd love to know what y'all thought in the comments down below. Are you hashtag Team Sasha Colby? Hashtag Team Anitra? Hashtag Team Mistress Isabel Brooks? Or hashtag Team Lux? And finally, it's time for Hottest Hots. On the runway, I'm going to give it to Mistress Isabel Brooks. And in the challenge for all three performance looks and verse, I'm going to give it to Sasha Colby. I also asked my patrons to vote on their Hottest Hots this week and they've chosen Anitra on the runway, and Sasha Colby in the challenge. And finally, I want to say thanks to you for watching today's video and give an extra special shout out to today's video sponsor, Mr. Who can help you get free prep online delivered to your door. Click the link in the description of this video to learn more. And I also want to give an extra special shout out to Ashley Brungart, Daniel Sandez, Fab Leisha, Frankie, Jeffrey, Callan, 730, Laura, Lisette, Louis Labrador, Ruff. 
Matthew Burns, Matto, Panda Kitty, Sailor, Steven, Topher, Tyler Hendricks, MD, Wheelie, and Will and Tana, who are all supporting me at the Bussy Queen Collector tier. See y'all later. Love ya. Bye. And I sat there wondering, was I the one who lost all meaning? My Carrie Bradshaw era.